five NCLEX questions of the day. The following scenario applies to question one to four. The nurse is caring for a 32-year-old client. Here is the progress note. A 32-year-old woman with no past medical history presents to the emergency room with a six-month history of waxing and waning unilateral visual impairment and facial numbness. She was well until six months ago when she noticed the onset of right-sided facial numbness and blurred vision lasting several weeks. She states that three episodes have occurred during the past six-month time period. Earlier today, upon waking up, the patient noted a sudden onset of blurry vision in her right eye and numbness on the right side of her face. She denies having any muscle weakness, gait disturbance, fever, or urinary incontinence. Here are the physical and diagnostic findings. Please pause the video to review them. Question number one. Based on the findings, the client is concerned for which of the following conditions? A. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. B. Myasthenia gravis. C. Guillain-Barr syndrome. D. Multiple sclerosis. The correct answer is D. Multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disorder that causes demyelination of neurons in the CNS. Symptoms of multiple sclerosis vary significantly among individuals and are related to lesion locations and how severe the damage is. Altered sensation with numbness and tingling is often the first symptom. Unexplained fatigue is the most common symptom. Visual disturbances can occur as well. It also looks like the client has been having recurrent episodes of these symptoms, which is not uncommon in multiple sclerosis. Another characteristic of multiple sclerosis is that lesions or plaques can be seen in the brain and or along the spine on MRI. Question number two. A lumbar puncture is performed on this client to help diagnose multiple sclerosis. Which of the following will be found in the cerebrospinal fluid if multiple sclerosis is present? A. Increased turbidity. B. High red blood cell count. C. High immunoglobulin. D. High glucose level. The correct answer is C. High immunoglobulin. Immunoglobulin are immune cells that are present in CSF due to immune response. There may also be slightly elevated WBCs. Very elevated WBCs usually indicate infection. Question number three. The client is diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and asks about medications for symptom management. For each of the medications below, select to specify whether the medication is indicated or not indicated for symptom management of multiple sclerosis. Let's first review what we learned about multiple sclerosis symptoms in my last video. As we mentioned earlier, there is numbness and tingling that may result in pain in the arms, legs, trunk, or face. And gabapentin is an excellent medication to treat peripheral neuropathy. Clients can also experience muscle spasm in which baclofen is a muscle relaxant that can be used to relax muscles and relieve pain. There is also difficulty with walking and balancing, and medications like famperdine and dalfamperdine are prescribed to improve walking ability in people with multiple sclerosis. What about propranolol, which is a beta blocker, because it ends with the suffix LOL? Propranolol is not indicated as these clients do not have cardiac or blood pressure problems. What about methylprednisolone? Yes, steroids are indicated to reduce severity of symptoms during relapse in multiple sclerosis. Question number four. The same client who was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis is receiving discharge instruction from the nurse. Which of the following statements made by the client indicate understanding? Select all that apply. A. I will wash my hands and avoid crowded places. Yes, that is correct, because the mainstay of treatment for multiple sclerosis is disease-modifying treatments, which modifies the immune system and puts clients at risk for infection. Washing hands, avoiding crowded places, and contact with sick individuals should be reinforced. B. Taking hot baths before bed can help with muscle spasms. 
This is incorrect because heat exposure can make symptoms worse in multiple sclerosis. Clients should be educated to avoid saunas, hot tubs, and stay cool during hot weather. C. I need to call my doctor if I start to develop yellowing of skin and eyes, dark urine, or pale stool. Yes, that is correct. These are signs of liver damage, which is one of the side effects of disease-modifying treatments. Another common side effect is flu-like symptoms, but they do not need to be reported. D. I need to make sure I have regular bowel movements. Absolutely, fatigue and decreased mobility and multiple sclerosis increase the risk for constipation. So encourage oral hydration, fiber, and use of laxatives if needed. E. I need to balance rest and activities. This is also correct, because again, fatigue is the most common symptom of multiple sclerosis. Question number five. The nursing student is studying pharmacological interventions for neuromuscular disorders. For each potential finding below, select to specify if the medication is indicated or not indicated for the management of the following neuromuscular disorders. Each medication may be indicated for more than one disorder. So, we have three neuromuscular disorders here. Multiple sclerosis, myasthenia gravis, and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. Let's go over each medication. What are interferons? Interferons are called disease-modifying treatments and are the primary treatment for multiple sclerosis, as mentioned earlier. Steroids such as prednisone are commonly used to lower the severity of symptoms in both multiple sclerosis and myasthenia gravis, which are both autoimmune disorders. Steroids help to suppress the unwanted immune response. ALS, on the other hand, is a neurodegenerative disorder like Parkinson's, and steroids are not indicated. Modafinil is a CNS stimulant that helps with fatigue in clients with multiple sclerosis and ALS, but is not commonly indicated for myasthenia gravis. Instead, pyridostigmine is commonly used to help improve symptoms in myasthenia gravis by preventing the breakdown of acetylcholine. Last one is riluzol, which is also a disease-modifying treatment that has FDA approval for treatment of ALS. It reduces the level of glutamate and decreases damage to motor neurons. Thank you for reviewing the questions with me. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more NCLEX questions. See you next time.